Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to another art session with me, Marcy, at Prince and Paints. I'd like to say hi, everybody. I missed you so much, and I'm sorry I haven't been taking the time to make some videos. I've been super swamped with making a four-foot mandala, and I finally just finished. So uh, I've been trying to get back into making some wonderful tutorials for you. I have a lot planned for the summer and uh, we're going to have a really great, fun, and interesting project for this tutorial. I will be making a two-part for this uh, tutorial because it is a rather large project. So I've decided to make a uh, dream catcher for you on this lovely project. The tutorial alone will be for this 12-inch mandala, and then the next part will be the continuation of the dream catcher, which is the feathers, the other parts of the paintings combined, okay? So with this one though, we're going to focus on the 12 inch mandala. All right, so to show you what we're going to be making, I'm going to show you this uh, in real time right now, and then I'm also going to pop up a little photograph on what it may look like in a beautiful setting. I do want to make clear that this project is mainly for indoor use and for house decor and things like that. Okay, so if I can lift this up and I'll show you exactly what uh, this dream catcher is going to look like. So the beginning part of this is the 12 inch mandala. This is made on MDF hardboard and we just simply painted the front of it with the black acrylic paint to move down further. You do have these beautiful uh, uh, cordage, which is made out of leather. I'm using ostrich feathers and these natural wooden beads. The second part is also going to be in the second video, which is a six inch round mandala. We kept it in the same color tones, just switched up the colors in more dominant areas. And then the last part is a small four inch mandala. And then we continued with natural color feathers. And again, one last uh, ostrich feather on the bottom. So this will be our completed project. I will make sure I have everything you need in the description for this project so that you can purchase it and follow along with me. Okay, so let's talk about the items that you're going to need for this project in detail. Uh, the first things obviously are going to be the MDF hardboard. Now I have uh, gotten together with a wonderful couple named Nate and Charity who run Nate Company on Etsy and they were kind enough to make me a kit package for the three sizes of bandolas that you do need. So I will be sure to put the link in the description for that and uh, you know it's within reasonable pricing I think and uh, be sure to check them out, okay? So if you don't want to do that, please just make sure that you find a 12 inch mandala or whether it's a record or vinyl, something that is 12 inches. Uh, find something that's six inches and something that's four inches. I do particularly like to use a quarter inch in thickness only because when you do paint mandalas anything thinner than that, they do tend to warp. So please keep that in mind. Okay, so I already have my ruler that's attached. Um, if you are interested in the ruler, I do sell this and make it myself on Etsy. I will have the link for that. Um, you can use a compass if you like. I just recommend that you use um, the spacing width size of a quarter of an inch on every tick mark that you make. I'm also going to be using a watercolor pencil. I do prefer to use watercolor color pencils over chalk only because chalk can tend to stay and it becomes a little hard to remove at times. My personal opinion, but use whatever you would like. So watercolor pencil and then I did do a base coat of the matte acrylic paint. 
your choices, whatever you would like. I just choose to use the Deco R Americana. And then I'm just going to do my um, circles. I'm going to start at the first circle dot and then uh, go all the way around until I can't anymore. For the dotting tools, I'm going to be using um, basic uh, ball tip stylus and I'm going to be using the DIYs. I will not be using the Marks Mandalas today, so if you are using them, please keep in mind that they are a slight difference in size when it comes to comparing them with, um, you know, Happy Dotting Company or DIY or anything else like that. I will leave the links of the description of the dotting tools that I will be using in particular, so if you have not gotten them, you can get them. I'm also going to be using these small thin brushes, and these are just to be doing my sweeps. I think they are mostly used for doing calligraphy and uh, various artworks like that, but I will make sure I find the description for those as well if you like to purchase them. If not, please use any brush that you have on hand. Just keep in mind we will be doing some brush strokes today, and we will be doing some swoops. I do also use a hammer and needle nose pliers. The hammer is basically for getting my um, my ruler in place with my tack. Okay, um, I just tap it a slightly bit, and you know, sometimes when I do take out the tack, um, the metal part can come out at times. So I need the no needle nose pliers to remove it. We will also be using them for the second part of the video with using clamps to uh, attach the feathers. Pencil sharpener you will also have to have to go with your watercolor pencil. The paints I'm going to be using are some neutral tones, some golds, some yellows, another gold, and two colors. So for the yellow colors, I'm going to be using the Deco Art Americana is the cadmium yellow. I'm going to be using the deep okra, the honey brown, the neutrals I'm going to be using Mississippi mud, khaki tan, and then the metallics are going to be mink pearl and the white pearl, and then glorious gold. And then for my top dots that I do, I actually like to use puffy 3D paint. You can find this at Walmart, I believe so, or online. I like the consistency that this leaves because it's already thickened for you. So it's gold metallic is the color. And the colors I'm going to be using is open water and desert cactus. So those are my paints. I also do use and I know this is a big no-no for some people, but I do use water to dilute my paints. You can use Liquitex, any kind of uh, medium base to, you know, fluid to thin down your paints or thicken them. I have been doing it for so long though with water that I don't have any cracked dots and I rarely ever have my colors muted or muddled. So I do prefer to say that I do like to uh, use water. If you would like to know on how to mix paints, I can show you when we start our project. If you are using water, you really only need about a droplet of water per uh, amount of paint. Um, so it's really not much that you need. And then the last thing you'll need is just, of course, a tray to mix your paints in. If you want to use the top of your caps, be, please do so. Uh, I just find cleanup a little bit easier when I use a paint tray. 
So that will be about it for this tutorial alone. I can show you the rest of the things on the next part two video, and that is basically going to be the feathers, the beads, etc. Okay. So for now, I'm just going to map out my circles, and then I'm going to also make my vertical and horizontal lines as a grid to map out my design element. With the pencil in hand, I'm just going to start at the first circle that is available and I'm going to slowly move my pencil and the ruler around until I start creating my circles. If you are using a compass, please just keep in mind that you need to move that compass every quarter of an inch. Okay guys, so now that you've mapped out your circle template, you're going to want to get one of these protractors for yourself. This will help uh, give you your pie shapes lines, like your vertical lines, your horizontal lines. I am going to line up the center of the protractor to the dot in the center. You should be able to get that tack you have, if you have one, um, in there to keep it tightly in place. It will start to fall in place of one of the circles that you have available. It should fall within like the 11th circle out from your template. So what you're going to do though is you're going to take your watercolor pencil and you're simply going to mark every point. So you're going to start the top and work your way around. And they are, well, I, I do believe they are every quarter of an inch. And then when you're finished with that, you're basically just going to get your ruler and line up your lines and make them across. I like using a protractor because it does give you that nice even spacing between your designs when you start to lay down your dots. Okay, so now that I've finished my using my protractor, I wanted to show you a quick demonstration that if you don't have a protractor and you did have a kit of these stencils, you can by all means we use these as well. Um, it's the same concept, so you would just uh, align the center with your de center dot and then from there you can use your tick marks and map them out and then just align your ruler straight edge to make the lines. So I'm going to get my ruler and I'm basically just going to start from top to bottom first so that I know where to align them and then I'll just draw a straight line across and then I go across to make um, one segment. Most of my work consists of eight points which is just your cross and then an X. However, this one we're going to be doing all of them just so that we can have a better understanding of where to align our dots. So you always want to do the opposite spectrum of this. So I'm going to start with the next line from where I started and just at a slight angle and I keep going around. Okay, so now that we've finished uh, creating our segments, we should have 36 segments total and that should give you uh, the design that we are looking at right now. Now we may not use all of the segments, but it's good to just have them as a reference in case we want to switch up our designs and do something a little different. So we can put away our ruler and our colored pencil for now. We are finished with them. So now on to our tools and our paints. The paints the, for the first part is going to be the glorious gold. 
we're going to use the cadmium yellow, the deep okra, and the honey brown. I did go ahead and I placed some in my tray. When I mix these paints, I only take uh, eye drop water and I do one drop. So my ratio that um, I'm using is about, I'd say a half a teaspoon of paint versus one drop of water, maybe two. So I don't go any more than that only because uh, I find I'd rather add more paint than waste paint. Make sure when you're mixing them that you mix them well so that there's no water residue floating on top. We're going to get our DIY mandala tools now. We're going to be using a size 9 first for the center dot and we're going to be dipping into the glorious gold. So I'm going to swirl that around so I get a nice peak of uh, paint at the end of my dotting tool and I'm just going to try my best to center that first dot. I like to do it twice so I will create that little bubble. So that's it for the gold. You can put that away now. Oh, we are also going to add mink pearl. My apologies. So add that to your palette. So again, I'm just going to add about a half a teaspoon and about one to two drops of water. Now, if you're using the medium, um, make sure it's probably, I'd say a half to half ratio. So keep that in mind when you're doing mediums, fluids. So let's mix that up thoroughly. We're going to use the mink pearl next. So we're going to use the stylus now. We're going to use the purple one, which is the larger, and that's about a size three. And the other side, if you flip it around, is a size two. So we're going to do large dots first and then small dots in between. So with your size three, so we're gonna find um, one of the lines where it created from top to bottom, okay? So on that first circle that you've created, two dot on that line. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in so I can show you. I know all the lines can be a little confusing, so just try to ballpark and make like a, uh, you know, perfect line following down. So on the other side, I will put a number three dot as well. You don't just want to go off to the side, so make sure it's straight on. And it's on the first circle again. And now the next uh, four dots that we'll do are gonna be kind of at an angle. So if you can imagine a cross, or I mean, I'm sorry, an X. So probably around like two o'clock, if you're looking at a clock, two o'clock, and then four o'clock. And then again, on the other side, you're gonna do about, uh, what, I'd say seven o'clock, eight o'clock around there, and then 11. I'm obviously trying to just ballpark this by looking at my design itself to create that little flower shape, but I'm also trying to just, you know, follow the lines. If they're not perfectly lined, it's okay because we are just building our design first, so we can fix it as we go. Now I flipped it around and I'm going to use the number two. And I'm just basically going to dot in between those other large dots. Okay. 
Please keep in mind not to have your paint so watery because it can run into the other dots. So make sure your consistency is rather thick than thin for these. So that's your first design element piece. Now we're going to use the green stylist. We're going to use the uh, standard size number two that is on most of these half about size two on one side. So now I'm going to use my yellow, my cadmium yellow. I'm going to come down where the large uh, number three dots are. We're going to come down to probably like the next line, I'd say. It's usually about a quarter of an inch. If you want to sketch it out, um, it's fine. So we're just going to make a, we're going to make a uh, diamond shape. Okay, just basic diamonds. So I'm using the three lines. So the next three lines will be considered um, this next design element to focus on. And I'm really just making sure that point of my diamond is lining up with the number three dot. Okay. So starting on the next line, your point will follow. Now, don't worry about if you're not centered a hundred percent. That's probably because your lines, your dots were not falling exactly on the lines. If you can see mine aren't like that either. So it's okay. So you should have, uh, how many points are there? One, two, three, four, five, six points. All right. You should have six diamonds. And now, uh, if you want to use the really small one, if you want to use a number two, this one doesn't really matter because we're just going to fill in that diamond. So I'm just going to dot in the center and then I'm going to pull up and pull down, pull the sides and then fill it in. Okay. So I would just make sure you have enough paint, not too much to where it's going to glop and not, you know, make a nice uh, diamond shape. You don't want it to be bleeding out from that shape size you drew. Just make sure that you are tracing your lines and filling in the diamond. These are great techniques to do. I think, uh, you know, anything that can pull you away from the average mandala dot is, is an added bonus when you start to develop your designing. It creates character in your artwork and, you know, uh, uniqueness. Okay, great. So now you have your six diamond shapes filled in with yellow. We're going to focus on using the technique of walking the dots. So we're going to walk our dots around the triangle. I mean, I'm sorry, the, the, uh, the diamond shape. So we're going to use the same size stylus. Okay, so it's the size one. going to use the mink pearl this time. So I'm just going to make sure I swirl that in and get a nice amount on my dotting tool. And then I'm just going to follow that curve of the diamond. 
When I dot, I do dot the uh, first dot, the base dot there, I do dot it twice. So I dot it once and go around the right, and then I dot it again and I go around the left. Okay. If you have too much on your um, dotting tool, make sure that you're cleaning it off from time to time so that you have a nice tapered look versus large dots at the end. Okay, great. So now our next tool is going to be the solid blue. So the set I'm working with looks like this. I just want to quickly show you the, uh, okay. So you all have five dotting tools. I will leave the link in the description for you. Okay. Um, you can also get the ones that have the swirl in them as well. As long as you have different variation of sizes on one end of the stylus. Okay, so the ones I have here Green is the smallest, and then standard size in the bottom. White is the next, which both has size 2, which is your standard size. And then blue, which is 2, and then number 3 on the top. And then <clears throat> 4 is the purple, and then size 5 would be the pink. And then on the bottom, of course, they have the standard sizes, okay? I don't know if I can focus in and so you can see. It's not going to let me focus. There we go. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five. And then the bottom is basic standard sizes. Anyway, back to what we were doing. So we're going to jump up a size and we're going to do the um, size 3. So now we're going to go back to the cadmium yellow, which is our brightest yellow. So make sure you swirl your dotting tool well. And we're just going to do the same technique. We're going to follow that curve. Okay, so now we're going to do that for all six points. Remember to keep in mind that we are going to be trying to center that dot on the line there. If you did have it lined up with the lines, if they are off centered a bit, it's okay. Just make sure that you have that imaginary line that you're following. I think one of my points is a little bit off. Okay, so now the next one we're going to use is the size 4 dotting tool, the purple. We're now going to use the um, honey brown. And see, as you can see, this first one is the one that I have <clears throat> a bit off-centered. So I'm just making sure I'm following down the center of the squared area between the two lines. Okay. Just to give you an example of what that would look like if it's not centered on the line. Okay, so now we're going to do one last color. We're going to go back to our mink pearl again. And we're going to use the largest, which is roughly about the size 5 dotting tool. So again, if you are only working with the DIYs or the marks, just make sure that you're, um, you know, having a, a gradation of sizes for your dots.
So that's finished. Our center flower should start uh, coming together nicely. What we're going to do now is we're going to use our brush. So I'm using a number one brush. It's the uh, red tip. I will leave a link in the description for these brushes for you to use. And we're going to start creating some sweeps with these. So we're going to use the cadmium yellow. If you don't feel comfortable using a brush, you can use a dotting tool. But for the brush, I just want to swirl my brush around just to get enough on the brush. It does not have to be dripping wet, just have a nice amount on the brush. Too much can get gloppy and then the paints can run in together too. And then you find yourself erasing a lot. All right, so I'm right-handed, so I like to start on the right side of the dots. So right next to the biggest dot you have, slightly tapered up, so in between the two first dots, I'm going to push down the brush, and as I pull up towards, I ease off the pressure and then flip out the bristles. That's all I do for that, okay? And I just try to bring that line up to those center dots. That's the first side I did. Now I do find sometimes I struggle to go in the set other direction unless I have a flick of the wrist right. And sometimes I don't get it right. So now what you're going to do, if you can see, I know it's hard to see this way, but you're going to push down and sweep up. Now your wrist is going to be straight and curve with it. I like to do it from the top end and pull down. I find it to be a little easier being right handed. I don't know why. So if you want to do either technique is fine with me. Now we did that color. So now we're going to choose the khaki tan. And for the khaki tan, so we're going to use the same brush. And we're going to just slightly go up. So what I mean by that is we're going to we're going to fall in the line right above those sweeps, okay? And then pull up. And you don't really have to go all the way up, just lightly get that line in there. Okay, so that's it for those colors. So now I'm going to use the smallest stylist I have, which is the size one. And I'm going to go back and dip into my yellow. I want to get a nice amount. And I'm just going to dot on that um, right below that line. And I'm going to pull up to make a swoosh. And then we're going to make one on either side of that as well. So you'll do the left and you curve up. And then do the right and curve up. Okay. If you're unsure on how to do swooshes, I also have a video available for that. You can check that out. Okay, so we finished that. That looks great. So the only other thing that we're going to focus on this when, th when it is dry is that we're going to go back over and do a swoosh on top of the diamonds with the gold. And then we're also going to do top swooshes on the swooshes of yellow. So we're going to do swooshes on top of swooshes on top of swooshes. <laughs> Well,
What I want to recommend to um, off topic is that I like to use a damp cloth, um, a baby wipe or anything um, to cover my paint tray. I do that because acrylic base usually will tend to get a skin on top of your paints. The water will start to evaporate. So I like to keep a damp cloth over it and it does help uh, lengthen the, uh, you know, the life of your paints. So you can try it. I think it's just a great technique to abide by when you're painting. So we're going to go back with the light green and the number one stylus tool. And so my, my diamonds are dry now, so I'm going to focus on doing my um, glorious gold swooshes. If your paint isn't dry, please um, take the time to just go back over it. So I'm just dotting on the top of it and pulling down to the other side, okay? Sometimes at the end of projects, I will go over and do my top dots and I will do my top swooshes. But for this purpose, I am just going to show you uh, this element. I'm also going to go over this again one more time with the 3D paint, the puffy paint. So I'm going to use the same stylist again and I'm going to go back to the mink pearl now. So where the little dots are, I'm going to pull down one small swoosh. It should kind of fall in between where your sweep lines ended, and it's just a little added bonus of a design. Okay, so now our flowers are finished here. Okay. So now moving on, we're going to go to uh, use our, our blue, that's our size 3. We're going to do mink pearl. So right below that line, we're going to make a series of dots. Okay, so the top portion of my dot is falling right on the line. Okay. So use that line as your guide. Try to make them nicely spaced apart so that they don't bleed together. If your paint, again, is if it is very watery, please um, make sure that they are spaced apart. Otherwise, you're going to be getting a wet Q-tip to wipe it all up again. <laughs> All right, so that's the dots. Okay, I did a quick time lapse to show you. <clears throat> so now we're going to introduce some colors. So let's zoom in. So how we're going to execute this one and where we're going to align the next rows of dots is So I'm going to use it. I'm going to use your number size two. Okay, you can use any of the size of the dotting tools you like. I just had this one in my hand from previous. So now where all my swooshes are, my yellow swooshes, I'm going to place one single dot. Okay. Um, I also am going with the glorious gold. I apologize, I didn't let, let you know. Okay, so I'm basically just following that center swoosh down. They are resting on the center line there, so I don't have a problem with figuring out where they're supposed to be. So that one's a little off if you notice, and that one too. 
Okay, so we're also going to do the other dots as well, where the, where the walking dots are. So this could get tricky. So make sure you're just lining yourself up with the larger dot, not the rows of dots we just did. Okay. Okay, so the next layer, we're going to actually just do one more row with those dots, okay? So you're going to have two. So now we're going to focus on doing a larger size dot. So our center dot. <coughs> yeah, so the top part we did the triangle or the, the diamonds. So now we're going to focus on doing a circle. We're going to go with the size 6 dotting tool for the DIYs and the glorious gold. And I'm just going to do one single dot centered in that segment area. Okay, so it should start to look something like this. So now I want to introduce you some new colors. So I'm going to cover up my yellow palette. So I'm going to start with the white pearl. So I'm going to mix some of that on my tray. Remember it's a, I use a, a half a teaspoon to one drop, one or two drops of water. We're going to do the desert cactus as well. And then we're going to do the open water. One dot of water. And we're going to mix them up very well. Okay. So we're going to use the gold, the blue, the green, and the mink, um, I mean, I'm sorry, the um, pearl white. So we're going to start with the smallest size. We're going to actually start with the number two dotting tool. So on your green, if you're using green, just flip it around to make sure you're using the size two. You can also use the white dotting tool, which has two on either side. So we're going to do another variations of walking dots again, okay, with our gold. And I'm just tapering up so that my last dot falls in between the large and the, the next dot up. I don't go underneath, I just kind of fall to where that dot, that dot starts. All right, we're going right at it. All right, so now our next color is going to be the white pearl. We're going to use the blue, which is the size three. So we're really just going up in gradient of sizes, two, three, four, five, etc. And then again, I'm just gonna follow up and now I'm gonna fall at the dot for this one. Okay, so it should look like that. Great, so our warp pearl is done. Now we're going to go with our purple. So it's our size 4. We're going to go with the green. Same concept, so we're going to do our walking dots. And 
and I'm just falling in between those two gold dots, okay? Just make sure that your spacing is really, uh, you know, aligning right. <clears throat> Alright, so let's zoom out and see how it looks so far. So it's starting to look really nice. You could tell we have nice, uh, we have nice uh, spacing between each walking dot segment. And then now we're going to do our last size, which is the size 5. It's the pink dotting tool. If your paint's been getting a little tacky because it's been sitting in the tray, um, just dilute it again with one drop of water, okay? So with our open water blue, we're going to do the last part. And your dots should just fall right where that first gold dot is, okay? So right there, you should be able to stop with your walking dots. If you don't, it's okay. Don't stress over it, just enjoy uh, your painting. And in time, you will get so much better at your craft and these things will come second hand to you. So that's our finishing of our walking dots. So we're going to go back to our brush again, okay, our size one, and we're going to do another series of sweeps. So before I do that, I'm going to get the size two dotting tool and I'm going to dot um, one small gold dot, just like I did above, to mimic, and that is going to help to where my sweeps will start. Okay, so now let's grab our brush and we're going to go back into our khaki tan. Okay, so we're going to use khaki and blue for this one. <coughs> My khaki's getting a little tacky, so I'm going to add uh, a little bit of water to mix that around. Hope you guys don't mind, I like to show you how I mix my paints and how uh, to execute troubleshooting problems. I think it's important. Okay, so again, I'm going to start at the right. It doesn't matter which one you start at. So let's zoom in a little bit. So now you're just going to basically at an angle start right near that gold dot and follow the curve up, okay? And I'm also doing this now for the top part. On the other side, if you want to do it from the left, you can. I like to do from top down. So now that we've finished our khaki, we're going to go into our blue. And now remember with the blue, we're just going to um, align that right above where we started with the khaki. So on the next line up. Okay. So you can see it's a little bit higher than the khaki. And I'm just going to follow the curve of the khaki. I don't want to really cover the khaki, but if I do, it's okay. Just make sure that you're following. And you know, the sweeps, you really want to try to uh, master doing them quickly and lightly so that they have a nice tapered look to them. In time and practice, this will definitely become uh, very easy for you.
So we finished our blue. We can put our brush aside. So we're going to go with our purple as the number four. And we're going to go back into our glorious gold again. So I'm just mixing it up because I haven't used it to make sure that it's thinned out. If I have to add water, I will. So I'm just going to dot in between the two sweeps and pull up as um, to make a swoosh. So now that we finished that section, we're done doing the blue section. Okay. So we're going to go back and resort to the using the triangle uh, design. So with my pencil, I'm going to draw a triangle where the swooshes are that I just did, the gold swooshes. In the meantime, I would get a number two and just dot right below the swooshes. Okay, I forgot to do that part. So just make sure you have a series of gold dots that follow each little design piece. It kind of fills in that void there too. So now we can start on fresh on the next line down. And I'm just drawing a little bit larger of a size for the diamond shape. I'm going to take up space of about, I'd say, uh, four lines here, okay? So that top line, and then I'm going down to the next one, and then I'm going to go down to the next two to make that bottom part of the diamond, okay? Just make sure that you make sure you're following and landing on the, the fourth line down for all of your shapes and that you're not coming up short because if you do that, your um, designs aren't going to be lined up properly. There's my design, there's my um, diamonds laid out, my rough sketch. So I'm going to go back to my yellow again. Okay, and I'm going to fill them in just like I did with the small uh, diamond shapes. I would probably go with a size maybe like three for the blue, uh, just to, uh, you know, help fill it in a lot quicker because it's a bigger size diamond. Okay, so once again, I'm, do I'm dotting my glob of paint in the center and pushing it up towards the top, the bottom, and to the sides, and then filling in those other areas. That's how I like to fill in my diamonds. Okay, so we finished filling in our diamonds. We're now going to move on and we're going to do our swoops this time. So we're going to get our brush. Okay, so the only color that we're going to add to this one is the Mississippi mud. Okay, so again, we're going to go with this is the white and then we're going to use the um, honey brown and then deep okra okay and then we're going to use the Mississippi mud and then the khaki tan okay so white honey brown deep okra Mississippi mud and khaki tan So we're just going to build off this area. So what I mean by that is um, 
Oh, wait, I'm sorry. So before you uh, do your brush, do one more dot of gold. Okay, because this will help um, make sure that our, our swoosh is falling at something and not a negative space. Now you can take your brush and we're going to use our white and again we're just going to lay the brush down and we're going to just curve around the diamond. Now we're going to move on to our honey brown and again remember that concept of just uh, uh, laying these swoops a little bit above the first one. All right. So the next line from up that from that we're just going to do that same uh, swoop technique. So when I do the bristles, I'm just laying it halfway down and then I'm, so it creates that um, wider portion at the bottom. And then as I go up with the curve, I lighten up on the pressure. And that is how you would get that swoop. Okay, so I'm gonna wash my brush real quick. And now I'm going to go with the deep okra. So the next one we're going to do is uh, a little bit in between the two lines. <clears throat> okay. I'll zoom in so you can see. So I'm going, I'm going a little bit above that next line. Okay, kind of in between the two. So the next color we're going to do is the Mississippi Mud. And once again, we're going to go a little bit further up. Okay, and just find yourself going towards that center gold dot. Always make that your focal of where you're going to end. And the last color we're going to do is the khaki tan. And again, right above a little bit below the Mississippi button. So you have sort of a staggered look to your um, sweeps. So that completes your sweeps. They look really beautiful. So now we can do another border of dots to tie that design in. Okay. So I'm gonna go with a size six dotting tool in the DIYs. And I'm gonna go back into the white. I'm probably gonna need a little bit more than this to refresh in, but um, I'm just going to show you. Get enough on your dotting tool and the next line down. Not that line, but like the, the, the full uh, 
square segment there. You're going to do a dot for number six, just like that, okay? I'm having the dot rest on that first line versus um, down on the second one. If you want to try to center it, I mean, it, the size does kind of fall into the whole center of the segment anyway, but I do try to at least keep them um, because, you know, the slightest bit uh, off can make your uh, dots look crooked. So I do try to have the top of them fall on that top line there. So we finished our white dots. Now we're going to use the uh, size one for the light green stylus. I'm going to use the gold, the glorious gold, and I'm lightly tapping into that paint. I don't want a lot on this one. And this may seem rather tedious, but it does help tie in some nice design elements to it. I am going to dot one small dot in between each negative space of the dots. I'll zoom in so you can see. So tiny little dots on all of the um, areas. So we finished our small dots. Now we're going to, um, we're getting down to the uh, bare minimum here for the edge, okay? The bottom space, I do want you to make sure that you leave that alone because we are going to do that a solid gold strip of paint, okay? Um, and the side of it, depending on how thin or thick your uh, mandala is. We also need to uh, we're going to do the same concept as the walking dots, okay, and the colors. Only we're going to switch up and use the green this time instead of more dark. We're going to focus to do um, each of the uh, diamond shapes first. So focusing on the diamond shapes, I think we're going to do one in between them as well. Okay. So what I mean by that is uh, we're going to get the purple we're just going to add a dot below the uh, diamonds okay so I'm lining it up with that diamond again so we're going to do that first this is with the glorious gold and then I'm also going to place one in between that area as well okay Now I'm going to go with a larger mandala tool. So we're going to go back to the size 6 again. We're going to use the glorious gold. And right below that dot we're going to do a large dot. Just like we did in that uh, area above. Good. 
Good, so now we're going to focus on the same concept with the walking dots. So we're going to do gold, white, and blue. We're going to leave out the green. The swoop we're going to do is the khaki and green and gold, okay? So get the number two and do the gold for the walking dot. Remember, they're going to fall in between that large dot and the smaller one. So do that for each one. Okay, so now the next color is the white, the metallic pearl white. I'm just mixing my paints really quick. And I'm going to use this blue stylus, which is the size 3. So again, I'm just doing the walking dot and I'm falling right where the top gold dot is. Do that for every single one. So we finished our white, so now we're going to go with our uh, open water blue again, and we're going to do the size 4 purple stylus. This is the last one we're going to do, so we're only doing three colors for this one. So again, do this for every single one. So we finished our walking dots. Now I'm going to use the number two and I'm going to go in with the gold and once again I'm going to add that bottom dot for each one with the glory's gold. So now that we've finished that, we're going to focus on doing the sweeps. We're going to do the khaki tan and the desert green. Get your brush out. We're going to go into our tan first. And then we're going to do our sweeps, just like before. Press and pull out. Okay, so we're going to do all tan. And then we're going to go back and do the green as well. Remember to, to focus on uh, making sure your green is a little bit higher than the tan.
Okay, so we're almost finished. <clears throat> so our sweeps are finished. So now we're going to focus on doing a swoosh. We're going to use the size 5 as the largest color, or the, the largest uh, dotting tool. We're going to go with the glorious gold again. I'm just going to quickly mix my paints together. So make sure you just get enough on your dotting tool. And I'm going to dot right at the line where the sweeps started and pull as far as I can up to the white dots. Okay. If you can't, uh, by pulling, you know, the, the swoosh up, that's okay. Just pull up until it can't anymore or take um, a fine tip and pull that paint up. I'm falling in a little bit right before that line, if you notice. I just want to make sure that they look a little bit even. I don't want one shorter than the other or one longer than the other, so I'm finding that that's as far as I could pull with that kind of paint, and that's okay with me. And then in that top area, we're going to do a few variations of some smaller swooshes. Where my other areas have dried, we could do some top dots as well. So our large swooshes are finished. We're going to go with the size 1 as the smallest stylus. We're going to go back into their gold again. I don't want a lot on my stylus, just enough. And where the tip ends, I'm going to dot next to it and pull and follow that curve. Okay. The curve is kind of mimicking and following the sweep that we did. So on the other side as well. And we're going to do two. So I'm staggering a little bit so the bottom will be longer and the top one will be a little bit shorter. Okay, so if you find that you want to dot it first and then pull it. Okay. So it's teeny tiny little swooshes. We're also going to go back and do that in that area as well with the little swooshes. So we'll do the bottoms first and focus on those. If you find you want to wait until your paint is fully dry so you're not sticking your hand in anything that's wet, uh, please come back at a different time and do that. For this purpose, I'm just doing everything real time. So the small swooshes are finished. Keep that in your hand and we're going to go back up and uh, we're going to do the small swooshes on the blue too. So where the gold swoosh goes up and they have that negative space, we're just going to do, I think we're just going to do two. Yeah, we're just going to do two because that is such a small negative space. I feel like they would get a little cramped if we did four of them there. So we're just going to do two at the top there. So 
So now our small gold swooshes are finished. We're just going to focus on doing some top dots. So I'm going to pull out my puffy 3D gold paint. Make sure you shake it up really well. Shake it down so that the paint falls down towards the tip. Um, it does tend to get trapped air in it, so you do want to squeeze a little bit out on your tray first because it could potentially uh, splatter out and then you have to clean that up. So, And it's hard to clean up gold shimmery uh, metallic paints. So zooming in, we're going to show how to do these top dots. Okay. So I'm going to try to hover over this area so you can see it. Just apply light pressure. You're going to start from the center and squeeze that paint and keep going until your ball of your dot completely covers your first gold dot you did. If you have to push it a little bit around, by all means go. And then you'll have a little peak at the top. And then once this dries, it will be shinier looking. Okay. So then I'm also going to do the top swooshes here as well. Okay. Um, I'm going to do those last because right now I'm just going to do dots because I don't want to mess anything up. So those larger gold dots, we're also going to do the same thing. So we're going to we're going to push that puffy paint in. Okay. So we're doing that for every single dot. And then we're also going to do the bottom dots. So anything that was a size six, we're going to do the top dots with. So those are finished. So our top dots are done. We're now going to go back and do the swooshes and then we're going to do a larger swoosh on that uh, yellow larger diamond. In the meantime I do want to show you this last section. So this last strip, strip you see we're going to do a gold band. So I'm just going to use a squared off brush, a fine arts brush I found, um, and I'm using the Glorious Gold. I'm taking this straight out of the bottle, I'm not diluting it, and I'm just carefully going to lay my brush up to the line. I try to make it as straight as possible by uh, making sure that line, okay, and you know, pull that paint out and we're going to go all the way around and then we're also going to flip it on its side and we're going to do the side of it as well. You will probably need to do about two to three coats of this paint, so make sure they dry in between coating and uh, because it can show through with the black paint. So my sides are a quarter of an inch thickness. If you can see, it's a little hard to see. So just to show you quickly, I like to do the side of it as well. So the band will look like that, so I will go ahead and finish that. So just try to keep your hand steady as much as possible to get that nice band of gold. Okay. 
So the next part we'll do after doing that band is uh, we're going to do our swooshes. So I got a small stylus. I got the number one actually I'm using. So I'm going to add a dot at the top part of my large diamond. So I'm just squeezing. It looks like about, I'd say, um, it looks like it would be like almost like a size th four dot. And I'm just going to pull that down. And when I mean I'm going to pull it down lightly, I'm barely touching the board itself. I'm just pulling at the paint. If you have something that's very sharp, I, I do believe there are some on the market that have very fine tip sharp uh, tools. These are Those are great for pulling at your paint to make these perfect swooshes. I just want to make sure that I have a raised puff of a swoosh. <clears throat> and we'll also do the um, inner parts as well, those smaller ones. So for the little ones, I'm just going to squeeze a little bit in my tray and then do them up there with the stylus tool. You just want to make sure and you focus on not having those uh, swooshes flat. They want to have some uh, raised texture to them. So that's about it for all of that though. Once you finish that, um, you can come back and we'll clean up the lines and uh, you should be finished with your first Mandela project. Okay, okay. Okay guys, so now that I've finished uh, with all of my dots and my paint has dried for a good uh, eight hours or so, I can go back now and I like to just use a damp cloth or I like to use um, some uh, damp Q-tips and I like to clean up my lines. Again, this should come off fairly easy by just using a watercolor pencil. Um, I know chalk and lead pencils can sometimes be uh, a little bit trickier. so. Um, if you are using watercolor, it should come off fairly nicely. And then uh, after that, we can move on to our second portion of our uh, Mandela project. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, and um, I hope to see you on the next one for the part two session. And uh, take care, guys. Happy dotting. Bye-bye.